Okay then, so now we've linked up our front end to the back end using this code right here. We've linked up the Firebase libraries that we need as well, and we've created an instance of the database using this method, firebase.firestore. And now whenever we need to communicate with the database, we're going to use this DB constant inside the database file over here. Now before we start doing anything whatsoever with the database, what I like to do is come over to the service worker, and I'm going to come to the fetch event handler and I'm just going to comment all of this out for now because while we work with the database, I don't want this fetch event handler to get into the way because I don't want to start caching our different data requests. So we're going to ignore this offline behavior and caching for now and then we'll return to it later on. And for now, what I'd like to do is just focus on getting our app to use some real data from our database and sorting that connection out. And then we'll come back to the offline functionality of this cached asset stuff and of the database as well later on. So then, now let's head to our database file. And what I'd like to do here is start to communicate with the database, in particular, one of the collections this collection oops let me go back to the database we have a recipes collection inside this database and that's the thing that i want to communicate with so to do that the first thing we have to do is use our db constant right there because we're going to interact with the database then we can access a method on this called collection. Now, this collection method is going to get us a reference to a specific collection in our database. Now, we want the recipes collection, and we pass that name in as an argument, as a string, right there. So now, this gives us a reference to this collection inside our database. Now, what I'd like to do is set up a real-time listener to this database. But what does that mean? Well, a real-time listener is something that sits in the background and continues to listen to this collection right here, the recipes collection. So if anything ever changes in that collection, for example, if someone somewhere adds a document or removes a document or updates a document inside that collection, then we can hear that by setting up a real-time listener. So that real-time listener will hear the change and it will send that change back to us when it happens. So how do we set this up? Well, first of all, what I'm actually going to do is a little comment right here to say real time listener, just so we know what we're doing here. And then I'm going to use a method called on snapshot. Now, this on snapshot method takes a callback function as a argument. And what happens is this takes in a snapshot object. So this on snapshot method, this is us setting up a real time listener to this collection we're saying okay listen to this collection recipes and when there is a change i want you to send me a snapshot of that database at that moment in time so that's what firestore does it takes a snapshot of that database or rather of that collection at that moment in time when there's a change and it sends it back to us inside this callback function so what we could do is use a method on this called doc changes to get all of the changes that have happened since we last got a snapshot. So what I'm going to do is console.log right here, the snapshot that we get back dot doc changes like so. OK, now then, if I save this now and go to Ninja Food over here, you see this thing? This is a snapshot object with the doc changes embedded into it. This is what we're viewing inside the console, right? So when we first started the app, it looked at the database and it took an initial snapshot of that database when we first load the app. And in that snapshot, it's seeing that there's two documents and it sees those as doc changes to begin with because we've not seen them before yet. This is the first time we refreshed the page or loaded the page or saw the application in the browser and it's bringing us back those changes, right? So those two different documents essentially. So if we open this, they are both objects and each object represents a single change. Now they both have this type property called added as well. So it sees these as added types. So they're both seen as changes when we first load the page and it will happen again if I refresh. We get those changes back because we've not seen them before since the page load and it says these are type of added because they've been added since our last snapshot. We've not had a snapshot yet, so that kind of makes sense. 
Okay, but what if I then go and add a new one? Well, let me do this. Let me say the title this time of this one is going to be, I don't know, Ninja Stew. And then we'll do ingredients. And the ingredients over here are going to be carrots, uh, sprouts. This sounds delicious and gravy. Okay, I know this sounds terrible, but whatever. This is the Ninja Stew. Now, if we go over here, we're going to see now we get another array with another document changing. And again, this is an added type. So every time something changes in this collection right here, we're getting back a change object to represent that change. Initially, it's whatever objects are inside the collection when we first load. And thereafter, every additional change, we get that back as a document. So the types are added in all these cases, but what if we delete one of these documents? Well, I'm going to go over here. I'm going to select this Ninja Stew and delete it because it sounds horrible. So let's start the delete. And that is a change. And again, we get a change object back. And this type it's of typed removed. So now we're setting up this listener to the database collection so we know whenever something's been added and also whenever something's been removed. And that's good because we want to keep our UI in sync with our database collection, all the data in there. So if something's removed from the database, we want to remove it from the UI, right? So the user can't see it. If something's added to the database, we want to add it to the UI. So now we know that we can do that by listening to these different changes, something added, something removed. So then, now we know we can get these dot changes. What I'd like to do is actually cycle through these dot changes every time we get them. Because remember, they are inside an array. We have an array of two document changes here, then an array of one, then an array of one again. So there could be multiple or there could be single document changes every time we get a snapshot, but we still need to cycle through them and do something. So what I'm going to say is snapshot dot doc changes. That gets us the array of document changes. Then I'm going to use the for each method on those changes. Now the for each method is going to cycle through that array and it's going to perform a function on each object inside that array. And we can pass that callback function inside here. And the callback function will take as a parameter the individual object during that iteration. So each change object. Now there's only one parameter. So let me delete these parentheses. And what we'll do for now is we'll console.log the change itself. So we're doing pretty much the same as we did up here, right? Only this time we're cycling through the changes and for each one we're outputting that change. So if I save this now, we can see now if I just hard refresh that we get these logged out separately. So instead of seeing an array of changes now, we see each one logged out separately. OK, so we have that change right here. So also on this change, we can access the data from the document that was changed. Now, we don't access it via a property. It's not there, but we can access it via a method on this doc property. And that method is called data. So if I open this up, we can see down here, if you go into proto, that we have this data method right here. We're going to use that data method on this doc property of the change to get the data of this object that's changed. So let me do that. I'll do a comma because we're going to log something else out and I want to get the change dot the doc property. We saw that a minute ago dot data, which is a method and that gets us the data object of this change. Now, if we look over here, we have one change for each object, right? And this is the data inside each one of those changes, I suppose. So that's what we're getting now using the doc property, then the data method. So if I save this now and come back over here, now we can see we're logging out the change and we're logging out the actual oops data right here. So we have an ingredients property and a title property inside the object. So now for each individual document inside our collection, we're getting the data inside it every time it changes. And again, let me just try adding a new document. Uh, we'll do the really nice Ninja Stew again, because I know everyone liked the sound of that. Let's do ingredients and we'll do carrots, onions. Can't remember what I put in last time. We'll say tofu this time and gravy. And if we save that, 
Now go over here. We should see the new change right here, but also the new object, the ingredients and the title. So that's cool. Every time something's been added, we're getting that right here. So now we could take this data and we could output it to the DOM, to the actual app itself, so a user can see it. Likewise, if we delete it, I'm going to go over here and go to delete document again and start delete. And over here, again, we get an object saying type is removed and the object which was removed. Now, one more thing I want to show you, and that's how to access this ID from each document change as well. And that's very simple. All we need to do is another comma here and we'll say we want this time the change dot doc dot ID. That's the unique ID right here for each document. So if I save this now and come over here, then we should see this ID as well for each document. Awesome. So that's all the data we can get for each one. And that's us now setting up a real time listener. Now I'm going to comment this stuff out right here. But what I want to do inside this for each method is look at each change. And I want to look at the type of each change. Remember, we had that type property, which was added or removed. Now, obviously, if something is added to the database and we get that change back with a type of added, we want to take that data for that change and we want to output it to the DOM so a user can see it in the app. Now, if it's removed, we want to take that data and that recipe and remove it from the DOM so that the user can no longer see it. So we're keeping our UI in sync with our database collection. That makes sense, right? So obviously we're gonna react differently if the type is added to if the type is changed. So what I'm gonna do is just a little if check. And we're saying here, if change dot type is triple equal to added, then we're gonna do something. And what we're gonna do is add the document data to the web page. Right. Ultimately, that's what we're going to do. And we're going to do a separate if check down here. We'll say if change dot type is instead, oops, not types, is instead equal to removed, which is what happens when we delete a document. In here, we're going to remove the document data from the web page. So we're keeping our UI in sync. Now, we're not going to do that just yet. I'm just going to leave it like that for now, but hopefully now you understand how we're setting up a real time listener using on snapshot sends us back a snapshot every time something changes on the database and also an initial snapshot as well. When we first load the page in the browser or refresh it, then we're cycling through the doc changes and for each change, we're firing a callback function. We're checking the type of that change. And if it's added, we're going to do one thing. If it's removed, we're going to do another. And we'll come to that in the next video where we're going to start to update the UI with the data in our database.